So uh, my name is Jeremy. I run a company called Hand Labra Games. We're from Cleveland. Uh, we make digital tabletop games. So what we do is we work with companies that make tabletop games, card games, dice games, and we turn them into video games that you can play on Steam, on your tablet, on your phone. Uh, the game that we're showing off this year here at GDEX is called One Deck Dungeon. And what it aims to be is to take the experience of playing a roguelike dungeon crawling, sort of almost a Dungeons and Dragons kind of feel game, boil it all down into a deck of cards and some colorful dice, and then you play that uh, on your computer. Uh, you choose a hero to play, whether it's the typical you know, warrior, rogue, um, magician, archer, etc. And you shuffle the deck. Each card in the, de in the game is the doors that you will open, they are the, the monsters that you will battle, they are the loot that you will take after you win, uh, and they're their experience, the experience that you use to level up your character. And you just sort of work your way down through the dungeon until you hopefully battle the boss at the end and win. Uh, there's also character progression in the game, so as you continue to descend uh, the dungeon, you start to build up more and more in your character so that the next time you take on that same dungeon, it might be a little bit easier and you can get some even cooler loot. That sounds pretty awesome. And from what I understand, it's kind of like you're ahead of the game because you're taking cards and are you putting it in any type of digital format or? So yeah, so the game itself started life actually as a physical game. Uh, and we've worked with the company that made it a physical game and we turned it back into a video game that you can play. It's available now on Steam, it's on iOS, it's on Android. Uh, and it, what we do as a studio is we try to sort of capture what made that tabletop game fun and give you a new way to play it uh, digitally. You know, so a lot of times people want to play these games, but, you know, it's hard to get your friends together on a Friday night or a Saturday night, or, oh, you know, three of us can get together, but our other friend can't make it that night. So this way you can play the games online, you can play them solo, you can play them with friends, um, and it just gives you another way to play the game that you love without having to, you know, having to get all your friends together. That's definitely awesome, man. Um, tell us, how long has it taken you, taken you to develop this game, and, like, what's, like, some of the inspiration of it? I know that you've taken, you know, tabletop to yeah. digital, but, like, do you think there's a, a niche for that, or is there a special motivation for you? There's definitely a niche for it. You know, we started, uh, Handelabra as a company has actually been around uh, since 2009, but we, we turned into a video game company in like 2014, 2013, 2014, when we really hit on this idea of the digital tabletop. We, we started seeing that there was, especially on Kickstarter, a lot of really interesting new games being kickstarted in the board gaming space. Um, and most of them were from small companies, you know, two or three person teams. Uh, they were using Kickstarter to gain the money to, to produce them and they didn't have the resources, the money, or the experience to actually make video game versions. You know, a company like Hasbro, who makes Monopoly, they have millions of dollars that they can, you know, in-house team that's gonna build it out. These smaller companies didn't have that, and so we saw that as a real opportunity to say, you know, these games would play really well digitally. What if we built a studio around the idea of working with these companies to bring their games that people are already buying and already playing and already loving, and just give them a new way to love it digitally instead of on the tabletop? I agree, man, only because the gaming industry has expanded so much in the last five to ten years that this kind of seems natural. Yep. It's just, for me, it's very, very interesting. Um, but can you tell us, what does GDEX mean to you? So, yeah, so uh, we've actually been coming to GDEX since before it was even called GDEX. You know, a few years ago it was called OGDE, the Ohio Game Dev Expo, uh, and it changed over to GDEX uh, a few years ago. But, yeah, um, you know, I've known the, the team that runs it for you know five six seven years at this point um, and you know we were when it was in the tiny little show that it was when it was at the, the university uh, a few years it was over at COSI uh, and it, it's just it's grown every year it's super fun you know every year no matter what you know when this show happens we always know we're gonna come it's a quick shot down from from Cleveland um, and you know we get to see people that uh, we know are, are making games in our space you know when we first tried to start a game company in Cleveland a lot of people we talked to were like a game company, isn't that, isn't that that stuff they do out in California? Like, right. are you really gonna do that here? But, you know, over four years now, we've proven that you can make games in Cleveland. There's no reason why you can't, and they will sell. You know, we're on our third game now. Our fourth game is actually gonna be kicking off uh, on Kickstarter in November. It's a game called Aeon's End. Uh, and we're just keeping going, and we're keeping making it happen. That's awesome, because, you know, you did mention Hasbro and how it's a huge company with millions of dollars to market and produce games. How do you feel as like a, maybe a smaller game company doing it out of Cleveland? Like, do you feel empowered? Do you feel like this is just the tip of the iceberg for even more smaller independent gamers? I really hope so. You know, uh, honestly, the the amount of indie games that have been launched in the last few years has been growing exponentially. So it can a lot of times feel like you're sort of, you know, it's easy to get lost in the mix. And that's why, you know, what you were saying earlier, having a niche that you know works is, is really important. And that's why, you know, we really f fell in love with, you know, our, our team loves playing these tabletop games. And so, Part of what we do is we try to find tabletop games that not only 
are they good? You know, that's obviously rule number one. It's got to be fun to play. But you got to have a, a game that either has some name recognition or an online fan base that's existing. Maybe people are playing it on streaming sites like Twitch. Um, and that has name recognition or fans that can help you sort of take it over the edge, you know? Uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse, when we started working with them, had already sold, that's another game, I'm pointing like as if it's here, but you can't see it. Uh, that's our first game, it's called Sentinels of the Multiverse. It's a superhero comic book card game, and that game, had tons of fans that all were, you know, they get together to play it online and at meetups, and we knew that that was going to help uh, not only mobilize the fan base, but have the fan base mobilized for us, you know, because they now we find that people, you know, they, they play a tabletop game and then they say, oh, I want to play it digitally, but then we get people who buy it digitally and go, oh, I didn't even know this was a tabletop game, I'm going to buy the tabletop game. So we, we it actually kind of goes both ways, so that we, you know, when we work with these companies, we're both growing the brand and we're both getting it to the point where people are excited about the brand, whether it's a tabletop game, whether it's a physical game, doesn't matter. Um, they just want to play the game and they want to engage with the brand and, and frankly get to know the people who make it. You know, like we stream our games every Tuesday, Thursday, and, and Sunday, and we and we find that people really love coming by to like talk with the people that actually make the games. Um, yeah, so if you can build that niche for yourself, I think that that is something that could really work out well. I believe so, and I think it has been, to be honest. Um, but. Where can we find your games? You said you work, you have three, and you're working on the fourth one. Where can we find it? Yeah, so if you go to handelabra.com, it's like candelabra but with an H. So it's H A N D E L A B R A.com. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Um, we're pretty much anywhere. Uh, and the games, like I said, are Sentinels of the Multiverse, One Deck Dungeon. We also have a baseball game called Bottom of the Ninth. And Aeon's End, our next game is going to be on Kickstarter in November. Is there anything you want to say to your supporters, fans, anyone in general? Uh, just, you know, the Midwest is a great place to live, it's a great place to grow up, and it, we're hoping to make it an even better place to make games. Um, so if you haven't made it to GDX, come next year, because it's going to be awesome. I'm from Cincinnati, he's from Cleveland. Uh, yeah, Cincinnati and Cleveland and Ohio in general, we're, uh, we're coming up. Don't sleep on us. Right on. Without a doubt. And uh, yeah, this is a great interview. This is me signing out. And one last thing from him. Did you mention your Twitter and your Facebook at all? If you can okay. do that one more time. Yeah, it's the same. Handelabra, H-A-N-D-E-L-A-B-R-A. -E and you can find that on all the places.